comes to survival and prepping, wisdom is very important, but unpracticed wisdom isn't as important as you think. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can forage in the forest and what food we can find with if stuff hits the fan. And I'm also going to be showing you what I thought would be necessary in a survival walking stick or walking staff. Right now. So at this stop, I'm going to be reviewing the outside of my prepping walking staff with you. This is a five foot tall staff made out of one inch PVC pipe that I spray painted brown. The midsection is two feet long and the end and top sections are one foot long each and they're all connected with PVC connectors that make it a total of five feet tall. Now I'm about 5'8 and I was very intentional with this height because I need it to be a good spot where I can easily grasp it when I'm walking and I can also grab the top if I fall off balance. So your height matters. If you make one, you gotta make sure that you have one that's good for your height. Now on the outside, I wrapped each section in a different bit of paracord because paracord is very important for survival. I have lots of paracord. I have some in my bug out bag. I've got a lot on here. I even have a paracord bracelet that I wear a lot. And this is 50 feet of paracord that's braided on the middle. Um, this is 25 feet right here, and this is 10 feet of paracord. And that not only is great for if you need to set up a tent or somewhere you can stay, it also helps to make the PVC less slippery and makes a great handle on your staff. On top of that, I connected the paracord with this, and this can extend so that I can strap it over my shoulder or wear it like it's a backpack if I need to do something and I don't want to lose my staff. So that's very important. I have a lot of carabiners and not only does this hull hold the paracord in place, but these carabiners can also be used for um, a shelter. And then here I have a multi-tool that even has a saw. So I keep this outside of the staff so that it's easy access for defense or if I need to cut something or build something, it's very helpful to have it on the outside. And that is the basic design of the outside of my staff. As I go foraging, I'll show you everything that I find in our forest that we can eat in case anything happens. And I'll tell you what components I have in my survival walking staff. At the end of the video, I'll include links for my bug out bag and my three day food kit so that you can know exactly what I'm taking along with me as I go into the forest. One of the very few plants or objects in general that goats won't eat is mullen. And mullen is actually very helpful, which I don't think goats realize. The tops of mullen can be used as a great candle and it can be used as a grain supplement if you're in a pinch. So, these are actually really, really helpful. I just don't think the goats know it yet. So we got a good amount of mullen and we're leaving a lot of these plants still in here so that they can become seed and we'll know where to look for it next year. Now, I believe this down here is called lamb's ear, and people say that it's good for a toilet paper supplement. I'm not quite that desperate yet, but it is good to know where it is. So for this section of the stuff, I'm gonna take out the top, which just easily unscrews, which is super awesome. And in this section of the stuff, I have my fishing kit, which has a lot of great stuff in it. It's got the fishing um, string, it's got some bait, and I also have some other stuff in here. I've got a little can opener for cans, and a saw, which can also be used as a match striker. So that's great. Part of my disinfectant set, a straw of, of dish soap. Literally what I did was this, is I took a straw, 
and I flattened the bottom and then I melted it so that it would stay closed. Then I filled it up with dish soap and melted that end too so that it would be closed and secure. And now I have dish soap. I have a nice lighter. And that's part of my fire kit so that I can start fires if I'm cold. And the rest of my fire kit is right here. I have some stormproof matches and some regular matches. I also have a magnesium rod and I have some old twine and cotton which will work as um, kindling to help me start fires and taped to the front of the container is the striking board for my matches. And that's everything on the inside of this. However, right up on the top, if I take off this, you can see a durable rubber band has been wrapped around it and I'm going to use that for slingshots if I need to defend myself or if I need to go hunting, then I'll have a slingshot. Okay. So I'd like to thank um, Uncle Al at DieBullfrog79, Mr. Robert at Homestead Aquarius, and Mr. Charles at Bushcraft Family for challenge challenging me to make this staff and for giving me advice on what I could put in it to make sure it's nice and durable. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, it's not exactly part of the top end, but it does connect. If you're going on a walking or hiking, then you're gonna want a compass. And to make sure I don't lose my compass, I super glued it to the top of this staff. And all I have to do is unscrew that part and I'll be able to get my compass. Now all it is is one of those cool circular globe shaped compasses that I removed the bottom from and super glued to the PVC. And now I have a compass. Autumn olives are small red berries and they're very tart and they're good in jams. And they have fairly large seeds for tiny berries so there isn't much fruit on them, but they're super good. KK isn't big on them, but Bunky and I like them so much that we each have a claim on a tree. Right now, these aren't ripe. They're just these tiny little blackish green dots that aren't edible. Well, I'm sure they are edible, but they probably won't taste very good. Come autumn, which is their season, there'll be little red berries with tiny little yellow dots, almost not viewable, but those little yellow dots are the only way I can um, differentiate them from a similar looking berry that is also red, but that's toxic. So autumn olives are really good and probably my favorite thing that we forest all together. Forage. The next part of my staff that I'm going to be showing is the middle section. Put that there. On this end of the staff is a compass, which is what I mentioned that I super glued onto my staff. If I unscrew it on this end, not there yet, but here, these are collapsible wipes. All we gotta do is add water and we'll have a nice wipe. This is part of my disinfectant kit. This, these are water purification tablets. And while I have more water purification items in my bug out bag, it's always useful to have them in the staff in case I lose my bug out bag. This is not a silly straw. This is a poncho that I squeezed really tight and wrapped with scotch tape. And if I ever need it, it's in my staff with fairly easy access. And I can use that if it's raining and I want to keep dry, or if I want to use it as a shelter because I don't have a tarp or anything. Next up is the first part of my first aid supply kit. In here I have bandages and some scrunchies if I need to tie a um, tourniquet with that. And I also have some super glue, which can act as a bandage if you have a wound and you put super glue on it. That'll close the wound and help keep anything out of it. And the next part of my first aid kit is the same straw tip trick I used on the soap. And in it, I have different medicines. And these are smaller than the straw I used for the dish soap, but this has aspirin in it, 
there's three little pills in here. And I have a bunch of other things like Benadryl, because KK and Vokey have allergies, and some other nice medicines that could be very useful in case of emergency. And then last in this set is my sewing kit. I have some pieces of string and a needle, which is helpful if you need to repair clothing that has been broken, or if you need have a big wound that needs stitching, you can use twine for that. I also have some blanket cloths, which can also be used to tie down a tourniquet, and some zip ties, which aren't really for sewing, but can be helpful. And I needed some place to put it, and if there's room, why not add it? This behind me is a white pine tree, and the tips of these white pines are actually very, very useful. This is the only um, pine tree variety that's edible in our area, and the tips can be used for a lot of things. Well, we don't use them for actually eating. They can be added to teas and tinctures to enhance the flavor, and they can be added to disinfectants to en enhance the smell and the cleaning capabilities. Perhaps you've heard of pine sol? He uses pine trees. And now I'm going to show you what else is on my multi tool. I have a carabiner attached so that I can attach it to my staff. It comes with the blade I use to cut the pine, a saw, better for cutting wood, another saw, so now I've got two saws, a small scissor, opener, open cans or bottles, and another bottle opener, so there's two. And then on the other end, there's a screwdriver, I think this is a file, and a bottle opener, a corkscrew. So they, this has a lot of useful items. The last part of my staff that I need to show you is the bottom. So first, I have my signaling kit. I personally haven't memorized Morse code yet, but I do hope to soon. So I printed out a Morse code cheat sheet so that I have everything I need, and I have a whistle. I still need to get a small flashlight and a little mirror that I'm going to attach to the top so that I can signal people that way. Next, I have a pencil, because if you need to leave a note on where you are or where you've been, or if you need to write something, or you need a pencil at all, they're good to have. And a whole lot of duct tape, because Honestly, you can use duct tape for almost anything, so duct tape is always awesome to have. And you know me, I like ducks. Next part is Ziploc bags for containing water. If you find a nice source of water, even if it isn't clean, I have the water cleaning tablets, you can store them in these Ziploc bags so that you can carry them around. Oh, also, there's a bit of aluminum foil that's attached to this, and you can use that, wrap your food in it, and cook it over a fire, so that's always good to have. And another kit. This is my spice kit. Spices aren't exactly a necessity, but you'll have to make your own food, and personally, I like spices on my food, so I did the same straw trick I did with the um, medicines and soap, and I put spices in it. I've got salt, pepper, and it's based on your preferences. You can add anything you want. And that's all of it. Now, another great part about this staff is, is that if you keep the top screwed tightly on, have the compass glued in the middle, and have this cap too, you can fill this with water. And I think it's a pretty good water source. If you find something, you can fill up your Ziploc bags, and you can fill up your pockets, your staff. So that is extremely helpful. Now, I understand that there is a whole lot of things that I could add to this stuff, and it's not 100% complete, and there are some things that it needs. However, I did make two other staffs for KK and Bunky. Now, Bunky's grown a lot since the winter, so I actually probably need to make hers a little bigger. But 
they have slightly different staff than mine. We share some necessities like the water carriers, the pocket knife, the paracord, and other necessities, but they also have some things that I don't have or don't have things that I do have, and they will complement each other. And on top of that, don't forget that I am also carting around my three-day food supply and my bug out bag. And this is our black walnuts. We have a lot of these trees growing in the back of our property and way up there. So it's pretty difficult to get to them, but I think with my walking staff, I'll be able to pull down the branch. So these are the traditional red crab apples. Now it looks like we might have a bug problem with this tree, but over there we also have some yellow crab apples. The crab apples can be used in jams and jellies or in juices because of the tart flavor that they provide. It's just absolutely incredible how they can flavor your fruit products. If you like your apple juice a little bit tart or if you like your jelly a little bit tart, just add some crab apples. That is really helpful for what crab apples are. This is an oak tree, and while oak is poisonous for goats and they can't eat these leaves, humans can eat acorns. These can be roasted just like a chestnut, and they would be very important for us should stuff hits the fan and we can't get any food at stores. We'll be able to take these and cook them and we'll be able to eat these. So these are awesome to have. If you know where oak trees are, then you can get acorns. We also gathered this wood sorrel, which is an edible leaf that adds a tart, citrusy flavor to salads. I made staffs for KK and Bunky, and their staffs are different than mine, just as their bug out bags are, but they complement each other. I'll leave links to our three day food survival buckets and bug out bags in the end screen, and if you'd like to see a video about KK staff or Bunky's, let me know in the comments. Although I might need to make Bunky's staff taller already. Our weekend cover song will be Jesus Take the Wheel, and we'd really like to thank you for supporting our music and helping us grow. You're the best. God bless!